Joe Caddick. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a bowl from a board. I have several bowls in different uh, levels of uh, being built. Uh, this is the finished one. This is poplar. Uh, I, I didn't think anybody would realize what kind of wood it actually is. And uh, as I mentioned, I have several bowls that are in different stages of development. Uh, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to lay, uh, draw the lines and lay the boards out. So uh, let me move to my next position and we'll start there. Uh, I decided to make the bowl out of poplar. Uh, I went to the shop and I went to Home Depot. I saw this board and I thought, well, you know, I was looking at it, it looked pretty good. So I went to Lowe's, I checked out what they had. I went to Rockler, I went to Home um, Woodcraft, and uh, then I went to two other uh, Home Depots. And I wound up going back to the first Home Depot. Uh, what I did was I picked this board out and I kind of hid it behind the rest of them. It's, I was looking at the end grain and I decided that this, out of all the ones I looked at, this is the one I liked the best. So what I did, uh, I figured, okay, I'm buying a one by six, and I didn't pay too much attention. It's supposed to be three quarters, and it's actually seven eighths. It's supposed to be five and three quarters, and it's five and a quarter. And this threw my measurements off because the first bowl that I made, I didn't look at that, but the bowl turned out fine. So, you know, everything worked out all right. So what I did was, I thought my measurement was going to be 11, so I'm, I marked this 11 and I cut it. I marked this one 11 and I cut this one. This is five and a half. This one's five and a half. And um, they're identified uh, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Okay, so let me just set these off to the side. Uh, so, okay, the board, I, I cut the board, I have the two halves, and when I made the other bowl, I, I made the cut right here and turned this this way. So when you look at the end grain, the end grain here is going in that direction, the end grain here is going in that direction. And on that bowl, you'll notice that there's a couple of these, I'll show you those later. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this different because I don't want every, I have more than one bowl. I don't want them all to turn out the same. So I did this on the first one. On this one, I'm going to turn this board this way. So what that gets me is the, the end grain on here is facing that direction. The end grain on here is facing that direction. So when I cut this and turn it into a bowl, it's going to look a lot different than that one does, even though it's from the same board. Uh, so the first thing we would want to do is uh, find the center. I have that. Right. Now some of this might seem unnecessary, but you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so. the actual center line okay so I'm going to take this is just regular masking tape and I find it's better if you tape do what you're going to do and peel the tape off if you leave this on there if you do this in advance leave it on for a couple days it's really hard to get the tape back off again so there's my actual center there's the center of the board and uh, what I'll do, I'll get the middle. Okay, so that's the middle. I'll draw my circle. This is the outside edge, and what I find is better if you do the outside edge like that, 
then each one of these is going to be an inch. So I'm measuring, you know, there's the outside edge, one inch in, one inch in, one inch. And of course, one inch again. Uh, all right, so I'll draw. That's the next. That's the next circle in. I try to keep these. Um, I try to keep my lines and my. Uh, my positioning uh, is, is as good as I can, but if it's off a little bit, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's enough wood. Once you see this together, you'll see what I mean. Um, when it's put together, you'll have, if once you cut it, there's five eighths of an inch of wood on the side of the bowl. So if it's a little bit off, that's another reason why this is one inch and this is three quarters. So when the, when, the, uh, when the bowl is cut and glued together, they'll be stacked. And if it's a little bit off, it doesn't matter because you have more than five eighths of wood to use. So that's that. These ones, oh, wait a minute, forgot to mark this. I got this at 45. You may be wondering why I'm doing this. This isn't to find the center. This is to give me marks, reference points. Okay, so. So there's my board. Uh, uh, the next thing, uh, well, we're either going to the bandsaw or going to the lathe. I think we're going to go to the, the lathe right now. And uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do with the, uh, th these are going to be for the bottom. These will be for the base. Um, I don't like a bowl that comes to a real small point on the bottom. I'm always worried if I bump it, it's going to fall over. So I always put a little bit bigger base, a, ba a base big enough that, it, that I think will take care of it, that it doesn't fall over. All right, let's go to the lathe. Here's the two pieces that will make the uh, base. And you can see what I mean about it. I kind of like the base to be substantial. And... Um, uh, we're going to do this on the lathe. Um, I have my boards marked with the alphabet, and uh, this is actually going to be the bottom. This part's going to go in the middle. And uh, I have uh, a Nova Chuck and Cold Jaws, and I have another Nova Chuck. With um, these are 50 millimeter, and if you measure the measure that, it's just over two inches. I have a Forstner bit that's two and an eighth, and this seems to work pretty good for me. Uh, also, I have that marked bottom. Put this in here. do a lot of cutting with with these cold jaws. It's you have to be kind of gentle with it. Uh, uh, with Forstner bits, can you see this over here? With Forstner bits 
from a quarter inch up to one inch, you can go up as high as 870 RPMs. For one inch up to two and an eighth, they recommend that it's like 620 would be your top speed. So I think I'm about ready to go here. These do get hot. Uh, you should be going going slow when you're doing this. I'm only going to cut in about a quarter of an inch. Not enough. There's a, an angle on here. I'm going to cut this out so that this angle fits that a little bit better than um, um, this scraper has always worked well for me. The angle seems to be just about perfect for that. Um, my face shield. Is there next to you? Oh. I'm only going to take off the, the least amount, just enough to make this fit in there a little bit better. Okay, 
okay so when I tighten this up when I tighten this up there's a little bit of a gap uh, that's a little bit more than I usually like but it's okay um, a quarter of an inch seems to be deep enough and uh, when once the bowl is finished, once the bowl is finished, I'm going to I'll mount this on here and dish this out. Uh, I'll dish it out, and I'm going to go in three eighths of an inch. Okay, so this is basically three quarters of an inch. I'm going to go in here three-eighths of an inch. There's this other board, the other board, this would be this board, I'm not going to touch that, and this board right here, I'm going to cut into it about three-eighths. There's almost no chance of me turning this into a funnel because I'm taking half of this one, I'm taking half of this one, and I have that. So. And I'm happy with the way that turns out. Uh, let's see. Oh, the next thing would be going to going to the bandsaw. And I don't know if you can see it. I've already drawn circles on here. I'm going to cut these circles and glue this. I'm going to cut the circles, glue this together. And when I glue it together, I'm going to turn this uh, 45 degrees. Um, a lot of times you're gluing at a 90. For this bowl, I'm going to turn it 45, and that should uh, the the you know, well the pattern that'll make the uh, the wood grain will show up better. Um, so this would be uh, cut this on the bandsaw. I already did that. Um, I cut it glued it together, and this is ready for the next, uh, so I'm, like I said, I did it in stages. We're moving on to the next bowl right now. So this is glued together, and the next thing will be uh, cutting out the rings. And let's, we're, we'll move to that now. Uh, I told you I, I'm doing this in phases. Um, so the last time you saw the board with the circles drawn on it, the first thing I do is have the bandsaw set at 90 degrees, and I cut off, I cut it round. These would be discarded, but um, the outside edge is 90 degrees. The next part of this, take the tape off of it and I have two there's the one board there's the other board I have the circles drawn on it and uh, I've set the bandsaw at 45 degrees and cut this ring off cut this ring up this ring and of course I have the center and of course the same thing for the other side I usually start with the bigger uh, ring cut it off cut the next one cut the next one right. uh, the next step here would be gluing and we're not going to glue today I'll show you what I how I usually do this it's back again with the tape, and uh, we'll start with the middle piece. Um, I line up my line up my marks there. Now, the, the reason the reason that I do it this way, it just seems it's easier for me to do it like this. Um, all right, there's the center. Now, of course, these don't line up perfectly. 
but it it doesn't matter. The masking tape seems to work pretty good. Uh, if you leave this masking tape on too long, it gets to be a pain in the neck trying to get it back off again. Would painter's tape work better? It, I've tried the, uh, the beige, the blue, and the green. The blue and the green seem to come off a little bit easier. seems to have uh, their own thoughts. Uh, I like to use the, uh, the smallest amount of glue possible because when it runs over the edge, then I have to deal with it. So i just do this for a second here. Okay, so there's the top half of the bowl. And the way I'm going to do this, I have two different types of, both of them are tight bond. Uh, I don't know if tight bond is better than any other one. Uh, this is tight bond number two. This is number three. This says water resistant. This says waterproof. This says it has a longer assembly time. I looked it up on a computer. This one, on the back it says uh, 30 minutes and overnight, um, you know, for it to cure. Uh, on the computer I looked this one up. It said uh, 30 minutes. This one said 45. So what I like to do with the glue, I like to use the smallest amount possible and what the reason for the tape it's going to be a hinge. So what I'll do is I'll turn this, I'll put on a little bit of glue, spread it around with my fingers so that it's just barely covering the wood. All right, when I flip it back around again, okay, now what, now what am I going to do? Well, I got a bunch of pencils. The glue's wet. It's already started drying. So it's sitting on the pencil, it's holding it together. The same, the same with this one, I'll put a little bit of glue on there, just enough to make it wet. Once again, the pencil. And the, the, the weight on this side is enough to hold it tight together. And you can see this, this takes a little time, but it's not, it's not an impossible thing to do, plus the fact that I've already cut it. Oops. I would glue that, put the pencil in. And you know, he said the weight of it will hold it. Uh, uh, at this time, uh, of course, I would be waiting till tomorrow to do anything with it. But uh, what I'd like to show you is um, if you were going to do the, if you have a uh, scroll saw, you could cut this just like this with a scroll saw. If you were doing it a little bit different, let's say you actually had a, a full piece of wood and you didn't want to break it. Uh, you know, this is just a piece of wood to use for an example. I drew a 45 degree angle here. I drilled a hole and I put the drill into it. I drilled all the way through and that is really close to being 45 degrees. So take the drill, take the drill and start the hole where you want it to, where the circle would be, where you want to start it. All right, then put the drill in through here, line that up with that, push the drill in 
pull it back, and then finish drilling the hole. That way, you could uh, you could put your scroll saw blade through that hole, and it would be at a 45. Okay, so you could cut the ins you could cut the circles and do it that way if you want. Uh, also, um, I'm in the uh, wood carving club. And the fella asked me how to do this, and I says, did you get a lathe? He says, no. He says, I have instructions for making a bowl from a board. So I figured, all right, well, let me see what you got. And I showed him how to do this. And what he did was instead of a round bowl, round, he made one that was egg-shaped, glued it together, and then carved out by hand, carved out the difference. Now he used basswood, which is, he, you know, typically what a carver would use. And I says, uh, do you have a bandsaw or a scroll saw? And he says, I got a coping saw. <laughs> so, so he drew circles on the uh, inside, drew circles on the outside, put it in a vise, and used a coping saw to cut, do all this cutting. So that was a little more than I wanted to do, but. Anyways, this is where we're at right now, and I just wanted to show you this. Um, and I think, so this would be, so I would be gluing these first. The next step would be gluing all these together, and we're going to uh, cut away and come back for that. Uh, the next part is the rings were uh, uh, completed. They were glued, and the next part is going to be to glue the rings uh, together. This is um, this is the base. That's tight enough. Okay. Uh, uh, once again, this is my uh, Nova Jaws. Uh, I made this. I took a center. Um, I drilled a hole into this board, a hole into this board, and captured this inside. The reason that I made this is I had a mistake happen, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I made this to make centering everything a lot easier. Oops. See, I got rings on here. This will help. This will make it easier to center what I'm doing. I have another way to do this if I wanted to. All right. So there's. This has already been glued. It's ready to go. So what I would do, this is, with the tape off, it's glued. I'd put glue on here. Oh, well, what I did, I, I rough sanded this with 120 uh, and here just to give it a tooth. So I can put the rings I can center the rings on here. All right, push this up. All right, if I wait about 20 minutes, the, uh, the tight bond will be sticky enough that I can release it. Get the, whoops, get the next ring, find where it fits. Of course, this would be this would be stuck to there. Okay, wait about 15, 20 minutes, and basically, so every would be is basically centered off books is centered off of here now what happened the reason why I'm saying this is I was putting this together whoops 
I was doing this a different way. I had I had this one glued to this one, this one glued to this one, this one glued to this one. I had everything all lined up, everything was fine. I had it sitting on a board. I had another board across the top. Everything was, well this was on top. I had a board across, I had clamps on it, I was tightening the clamps. Everything seemed to go just fine when I was doing this bowl. Everything just, it was perfect. So when I was doing the second bowl, I was, I did, I was doing exactly what I was doing before. Uh, this one was glued to, this one got glued first, then this one, then this one. Then I was gluing the bottom one. So I, I got it on there, everything seemed to be just fine. I was tightening up the clamps and I stepped back and I said, eh, you know, the board on top's bending a little bit. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more. So I tightened it a little bit more. That was the end of the day. Turned the lights off, went inside. I come back in the morning and this part of, this was okay, this was okay. This part slid over and that's what this is. So what I did was I, I picked up the bowl, took it over to the bandsaw and I cut off this ring and it's a little hard to tell from here but this is a half inch thick right here and one and seven sixteenths over here I told you that, that basically you got once you cut the bumps off it, it could be five eighths of an inch thick well if I'm a half inch over here and one and seven sixteenths over here that bowl is going to be really thin on one side so I figured, well, I, all right, I cut it off, and I figured, well, you know, sometimes a mistake can make you step out of your comfort zone, and you can actually actually come up with something a little bit better. That's why I come up with this. I can see where I'm gluing. And I didn't have any more wood, so I had some other, uh, this is poplar. Uh, these white lines are poplar and this is a piece of walnut. So I did a segmented bowl for the very top. Now the segmented bowl, you're, you have to be really careful with your measurements and your cuts and everything. And that's why this one's different. It's because the bowl slid on me. So anyways, it would, it's... That's why I made this so that um, when it's glued up, when it's glued up, I would have have that. And uh, now there's another way that you can do this. Uh, whoops. There's another way that you can do this. We're going to go back over to the table in a second here. This is what I was showing you on the lathe to level things up. This is actually the companion to this. You can see the rings on there. So I have a screw in here with a couple pieces of uh, masonite. This is cut to fit this. And uh, There's the grain of the wood, all right? So I'm gonna turn this 45. I'm gonna turn this one 45. That one's 45 off. That one's 45 off. Okay, so uh, so what I'll do make this a little bit easier. 
I, if I wanted to go with the clamps. So this is pretty much centered. That's pretty much centered. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to bother clamping. I'll just show you what I'm doing. Basically, I have four clamps on there uh, just to hold these together. And the reason that I have this is I might, I might need my lathe for something that I'm going to do next. And if I have it clamped in here, that frees up my lathe. And that's, uh, that, that, well, that's why I made this co the companion to this so that I could do that. And, um, I should actually have another block underneath here to make clamping a little bit easier. And I think, oh, all right, I think, I think I'm ready to go back to the lathe. I have the uh, Wood Turner's catalog here. On page two, they have some instructions for uh, lathe speed. Now my bowl is 11 inches across. And this is just the number. 9,000 divided by 11 inch bowl, the speed should be 818. The slow speed, you would use 6,000 divided by 11, 545. And I believe the reason for that is this is the speed that the tools will work best as, at. So uh, we're going to go to the lathe and do a little bit of turning. We're not going to do any sanding or finishing today, but that's okay. Um, I have one bowl that's already finished and depending on the type of wood that you're using you would determine how far down you want to go with sandpaper. Uh, this being a softer wood I would think maybe 400, 600, something like that might be fine. So we're going to, we're going to go to the lathe now. I have a, a 3H fingernail.
I stopped for two reasons. Uh, once to uh, one is to uh, move the tool rest, and the other one is to tell you that yes, the sawdust is hot. something else I wanted to mention on page two. This will tell you um, hole gouges, the maximum reach. So for the tools that I'm using, the maximum reach over the tool wrist is an inch and a half to two and a half. I don't, I don't have anything that I'm using today that would, uh, that I could, get, that I could over, reach over more than that. All right, I'm going to start cutting again.
little bit more right here. Speed out on that gun. Seven hundred. go to the inside. I think I can finish the rest of this with just with sandpaper. And I wanted to mention, uh, I'm using a uh, fingernail ball gouge and um, uh, I'm not really cutting like this. I have it pretty much turned sideways. I'm pretty much scraping everything. And it seems to be working pretty good. Um, I do have a bowl gouge here. Um, I'm going to have to take this off to move the tool rest. right now is um, vibration. Uh, I have had a bowl like this, I have had problems where it, it, it jiggles out near the end. It almost looks like you went after it with a uh, with some type of text, texturing tool. I think I'm going to need that other, that other tool rest. I was using a fingernail uh, bowl gouge on the outside, and I'm going to switch to a regular bowl gouge for the inside. And I'm not going to finish, I'm not going to sand and finish this today. Uh, I already have this bowl to show you what it would look like with this one, and I think that's, I have one other thing I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going to finish in a minute here.
that's as much as I'm going to cut today. The rest will be sanding, and I'm going to I'm going to leave this edge uh, feathered out like this. This will be flat, and I'll just finish. There's a little bump right here. I'll I'll probably sand that out. Then I'll reverse it and and dish out the bottom. Uh, that's about all I have to say about this bowl for today, but there is something else that I wanted to mention. Uh, this is one way, this is one way to do, whoops, this is one way to do bowl from the board with these angles, 45 degree angle and everything. Um, there's another way. Um, uh, what I did was I cut a bunch of strips. Uh, this is the big pieces are maple. This is Paduke, Purple Heart, Paduke, Purple Heart. And you can see I had a, the board I had was a foot by a foot. And what I did was I had four of them. So I had one, two, three, and four that all looked the same. I, when I drew my circles, I started with 12 inches, uh, one inch, 12 to 11. The next four was 11 to 10, 10 to 9. Now, board number two, uh, it was 11 and 3 quarters, 10 and 3 quarters, 9 and 3 quarters. The next board was 11 and a half, 10 and a half. The next one was um, smaller and smaller. So what I did was I stacked these up. Uh, I don't have it right here right now. So what I did, I stacked the biggest ones on the outside and the next size um, a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And I had a piece of paper with a drawing on it. I'm not sure if Nope, darn it, that's not it. Uh, well, it's okay. I had a bunch of rings. They were quarter inch thick. I ran it through the planer. They were a quarter inch thick. And each one in the middle, I had Paduke and um, Paduke and Purple Heart side by side. That was the middle of the bowl. And every time I moved up a ring, I moved it over a quarter of an inch. You can see these are quarter of an inch. Then the next ring was up another quarter of an inch and another one. I went to the trouble of drawing this all out on a piece of paper and then cutting it with scissors and laying them down to see what the pattern would look like. This is basically bowl from a board. This one is bowl from a board, but this one just shows off the grain of the wood which is what I wanted to show you with doing bowl from a board. This one is just a lot fancier, but it was, it was as, I uh, said, I dished out the bottom too. It was as easy, it, 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 well, you can see the line right here where each one steps over a quarter of an inch. And because it starts a quarter of an inch off, then the next ring up, it moves over a quarter, the next one up over a quarter, and that's what created these curved lines like this. And uh, like I said, this is just take advantage of the wood grain that's there. Uh, this was rather plain. It's just maple, it's just that. There wasn't anything about it that I thought was special. After it was done, I realized when I turned it, there's uh, some sequoias when this turns to a certain point, you can actually see the light bounce off in some places. I'm not sure if we'll be able to pick that up here, but the lighter spots on here, uh, it's, it's just the light bouncing off a little bit better. So anyways, this is my favorite of my uh, bowl from the board. It's 22 layers, 22 layers tall, and they're quarter inch. So I think that's about it for today.